folks, Craig here, and today I want to talk a little bit about Playdate. If you're not familiar with the Playdate, the Playdate is a little handheld video game device from Panic. Panic's been around for a little while. You might know them most recently for publishing indie games Firewatch and Untitled Goose Game. And they teamed up with a company called Teenage Engineering to uh, produce the handheld video game machine Playdate. Playdate costs $180 and it comes with the system and the USB cable and that's it uh, the box is nice makes a good first impression the system itself is tiny it's hard to understand just how tiny it is and until it's in your hands i completely underestimated how small it is but it feels solid and well made the bottom has a headphone jack and a usb-c charging port on top there's a sleep button with a little led indicator light the screen is very small it's unlit and it's monochrome and next to it is a menu button that you can use to quit your game, adjust the volume, uh, take a screenshot, and other uh, administrative functions. The controls are super simple with a D-pad and two action buttons, and they all feel really good in my opinion. There's a nice shallow clicky give to them. Uh, in addition to that, one of Playdate's unique features, there's a crank. Panic likes to adamantly point out that the crank is not for charging the device, like, you know, like a hand crank radio or something like that. It's actually an input method. You can use it to control games. The most compelling part of Playdate, in my opinion, is the season model. You buy Playdate and you immediately get access to season one, which is 24 games. It's, it's two new games every Monday for 12 weeks automatically downloaded to your playdate. The pitch was for everyone who owns a playdate to be playing the same games at the same time, but uh, you know, due to manufacturing delays and staggered shipping, that didn't really pan out. The first two games that you get with your playdate are Whitewater Wipeout. It's a surfing game where you do tricks with the crank. Uh, I really like the art and the music and the general idea of doing sports tricks with the crank, but I'm very bad at this game. I'm better at it than what I'm showing here, but mostly I'm still just pretty bad at it. The other game is Casual Birder, a little top-down adventure game where you talk to people and gather items and solve puzzles and, and take pictures of birds. Um, the crank is used to focus your photos and uh, Clever Lily to cycle through your inventory. I think most games make a solid first impression. You know, you have one of them where it's like a high score arcade mini game style game and the other one's a little more in depth. And I think that uh, both of those games put together make a really solid first impression. What's really cool is that every Playdate is also a development kit and anyone can make, offer, and sell games for it. Side loading is super easy. You can connect your Playdate to your computer or you can just log on to Play.Date and use a drag and drop interface and it'll appear in your games list on your Playdate. That's super easy. Uh, I personally bought Bloom. It was $10 because a lot of Playdate owners were talking about it. And it's a very nice real-time game where you check in periodically to answer text messages and tend to a little garden. But also on the subject of interfaces, I think Playdates is good. It has a playful vibe and feels, I don't know any other way to put it other than human, but it also conveys what you need to know clearly and simply. You know, some playful interfaces go too simple, too playful, and they just obfuscate some basic things you want to know. But Panic walked the line between the two pretty well here, I think. So Playdate does a lot right, I think. But on the other hand, the screen is, well, I, I think some folks are going to be unhappy with the lack of a backlight. I personally don't mind. The resolution is pretty good and there isn't any dramatic ghosting or anything. So there's a good level of clarity. And I, I, I personally, I read a lot. So I'm used to finding a light source for that. But I'm sure it's going to be a challenge for others. Really, it's the size of the screen for me. My eyes are awful, and this screen is just very, very small. I fired up Bloom for the first time, and I was just in disbelief at how tiny everything was. You know, I, I, I'm doing one of one of these, and I'm trying to cope with this absurdly teensy screen. It's, it's just not it's just not practical for me, and, and certainly not for more than like 10 minutes at a time. More than the screen, though, which I can, you know, squint my way through. It's it's the lack of the buttons for me. I, I'm sure simplicity was the point, but this is straight up austerity. The crank opens up some novel ideas, but only two face buttons severely limits what folks can build here. You'd have to go back more than 30 years to the Sega Master System, I think, for something with this few buttons. And even then, that was an outlier. I wouldn't suggest anything crazy. One other button, 
um, you know, maybe two tops, but it, this is this is just too simple for me for an entire system. So I don't love the screen, nor do I love the number of buttons, but I can live with those things. These things were a known quantity when I pre-ordered it, to be fair. It, it's something else entirely that ruins the play date for me. And, and, and I'm going to tell you what it is, but it requires a little bit of setup, so bear with me. So this is the play date. Again, it's $180. And this is a Switch Lite. It's $200. And this, this is an analog pocket. I paid, I paid $200 for this. This is a Retroid Pocket 2 Plus, and I paid $100 for this, like almost half. Now normally when I, when I talk about things like this, I don't, I don't really bring up money because some people make more money than other people, and some people have different thresholds and different appetites for what they're willing to spend on things. And, and to be fair, all these things I just showed you, all of them have different value propositions. They all offer different different things and what you're willing to pay for that different thing. I mean, that, that's up to different people. So for me personally, unless something is like an outrageously good value or just egregiously overpriced, I tend not to bring up the financials because financials tend to be personal to individual people. With that all said, I do have to reiterate, this is $180 compared to anything else on the market. That is a significant premium for what is, you know, look, I, it, it's a potato with a crank. Um, it's nearly the same price as a Switch Lite. You do, of course, get season one, 24 games with it when you buy it. Uh, but, and I say this with all due respect to everyone who made games for this, uh, none of the games I played so far seem like a killer app. So while yes, you do get season one, I would say that nothing I've seen so far or played so far really makes up for that difference in pricing. So the question is, why did I pay $180 for the play day? Because I, I definitely went back and forth on it before I, I, I ended up deciding to pre-order uh, because I play all these machines here pretty regularly as well as my 3DS and I occasionally uh, play my Vita from time to time. I, I don't I don't need any more handheld games. Certainly not one that's $180 and effectively only plays mini games. I bought into the vision, the idea of a shared communal experience. Everyone who has a play date playing the same games at the same time. One of, one of my personal favorite phenomenons that happens in gaming, and it was kind of an unspoken phenomenon, when you and all your buds on Twitter are playing the same game at the same time, um, it happens a lot with uh, Pokemon, but the sort of people I follow have a lot with Pokemon. It's happened with Breath of the Wild. Um, it happened uh, most recently with Elden Ring. You know, everyone's playing the same game uh, kind of together, but also separately. I, I really like that, and it really enhances the experience for me. And here is a system by design that was going to offer that experience baked in. It's even called the play date. It's, it's in the name. And you know, I can understand the challenges that Panic had with actually realizing that vision. But to me, it is the selling point and uh, they weren't able to make it happen. Even the player base isn't interested in making up for it. They're more concerned about spoilers. I went to the I went to the subreddit and most of the posts are like, hey, Ray, I got mine. Or like, mine's broken, what do I do? But you know, when people talk about the game, sometimes they, they spoiler tag the games, they censor the games and they censor what they're saying about them. Um, because while everyone gets new games on Monday, because people are getting their plated to different times, people are different points in the season and, and people who are uh, earlier in the season don't want to know what's coming later on. So the pitch of a shared communal play date is dead. And without it, I'm, I'm left with this tiny, unlit, austere, handheld uh, that plays mini games, and, and that's not really what I wanted. I don't, I don't want to find myself a year from now digging this out of a drawer and then scouring subreddits and discords to, to find, you know, a, a single worthwhile game to sideload. That's, that's not what I want, and that's not what I feel like I bought into. I paid one hundred and eighty dollars, what I think is a, a premium price uh, for this, for the experience, and I didn't get it. I didn't pay $180 for the hardware itself because frankly, it's not worth that. And I figured as much before I even got it in my hands. It's a shame because the system itself is, is, is not without its shortcomings, but it's nice. And the games that I've played as well have also been generally nice. They've been pleasant and breezy. They don't, they don't ask a lot from you, but 
Um, for me, the communal experience is is really what I wanted, and without it, I'm I'm left pretty disappointed. But that's just me. If you have a play date, I'm curious to know your thoughts, or maybe you've pre-ordered one and you just have you know completely di different motivations than I do. I'd be curious to know what those are as well. So feel free to leave a comment. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, you know, mixed feelings, but overall uh, a little disappointed. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I want to thank you for watching. And until next time, you take it easy.